Good afternoon, dear ladies and gentlemen. My name is Pascal Bruder. I'm a board member of the Schwab Foundation, and it's a huge pleasure and honor for me to host the Social Innovation Awards of 2024. This is not only an event for us, this is a celebration. We celebrate. We celebrate the courageous work and the very, very important action of our overdies. We do this here and now, and we will do this tomorrow in a plenary session um, when all the social innovators receive their awards from Hilde Schwab. So jump in then as well. It's tomorrow, Wednesday, 2.30 p.m. And both sessions now here and tomorrow will be both with audience and live streamed as well. So thank you for joining us. It is a great day for the Schwab Foundation and, of course, especially for you all, our awardees. Today, they will present their amazing work and they will share their experience, their impact, their challenges as well, and their success stories. And dear awardees, as a board member of the Schwab Foundation, I would like to express my gratitude and as well as my respect for what you are doing. Your action makes the difference for a more inclusive society, for a more equitable society, and for a more sustainable world. What you do deserves visibility, attention, multiplication, and for this reason, exactly with this goal, the Schwab Foundation gives a, pl a platform for social innovation and for social entrepreneurship. And we are all honored to have the co-founder today with us, our esteemed chairwoman, Hilde Schwab. The floor is yours for your greetings, Hilde. Thank you. Thank you, Pascal, for your nice words. Thank you. And welcome to all of you. In the name of the Schwab Foundation Board, and I would, li I would like to uh, welcome you here to this special session. Um, we are also grateful to the Mozeppi Foundation, who is supporting our work at the Schwab Foundation. Uh, and we are really looking forward to this award celebration with you today and tomorrow as well. The awards, the awardees, uh, on behalf of the Schwab Foundation, I'm delighted to welcome you. Uh, this is the annual meeting of the World Economic Forum, and we always host the, award, the awards here. And this makes, sh makes sure that you are recognized by a wide audience. Uh, this is a live stream uh, session, of course, so everybody can acknowledge what you have been doing. Uh, it is critical to have your work showcased um, in Davos here and live streamed around the world. At the time where we face many challenges, the world needs hope, and you are a great inspiration. You are all featured in our latest impact report that you have uh, on your hands, I hope. Um, and, uh, and as we will see, you are joining a community of more than 470 innovators who work in over 190 countries. Over the last 25 years, this community has directly impacted the lives of over 800 million people around the world. But the real impact lies not only in the numbers and scale of people that are reached, but also in how social innovators are achieve this. By reimagining broken systems, by developing new approaches to complex problems, and by empowering people they are the center of all our solutions. Tomorrow, we will have a moment to celebrate you officially on stage in the plenary session of the World Economic Forum in the Congress Hall, where it will be my honor to formally award you as Social Innovators of the Year 2024. But today, we are gathered here to learn about the great work you are doing and you are leading with your organizations to create a more equitable and sustainable world for all. We are ready to listen to you and look very much forward to how you explain what you are doing and to see more, learn more about your organizations. Again, my heartfelt congratulations 
and I look forward to what you have to tell us. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear Hilde, not only for your encouraging words, but for all your huge support, for your commitment, and I, I must say, your endless energy. Thank you so much. And all the awardees here, and many, many other community members as well, they are deeply grateful, deeply thankful for your effort and for the appreciation they get for the opportunity they have today and uh, in the future. And be sure all the awardees here, they would like to express their gratitude within their presentations in each and every presentation. And we told them not to do so because we want to concentrate <laughs> and listen to what they work and what they change. So I'll do it at the place of them all. I tell you how much grateful they are, thankful they are for you, Hilde, for the board members here present as well, for Francois and the whole team of the Schwab Foundation. And maybe in the name of all of our these, let's give an applause to all they do. But Hilde is right. Let's, go, let's, start, let's get started now with why we are here, so with your presentations. We will cluster them a little bit by sectors, technology, young people, institutions, people and planet, and we will start with the sector healthcare. So, Shuchin Bajaj is the first awardee. Welcome, Shuchin. He's from uh, Uchala Signas Healthcare Systems. Please, the floor is yours, Shuchin. As we gather here to discuss economic growth, liberalization, industries, and markets, a silent majority seems to slip through all safety nets. In India, we're talking about more than 400 people who are living with a burden of disease that's truly unquantifiable in its enormity. More than 60 million people slip below the poverty line in India every year just due to healthcare costs. More than half of all those who are admitted have to borrow or sell their assets to pay for their treatment. India has more than 800 districts, but 600 of them do not have access to any emergency tertiary care services, and people have to travel for hours in emergency situations like heart attacks and head injuries. I founded Ujala Signals Healthcare just to address these people and make sure that we do not live, lose lives on the road. But after this, I realized that tertiary emergency healthcare is just a little bit small part of the problem. Access to preventive and primary health care is more important because it decreases costs. So we started an initiative called Sehat Chopal and Sehat Clinics, where we go village to village spreading awareness about diseases and detecting them early before complications set in. I stand here on behalf of all these communities, humbly and gratefully accepting this report on the be uh, behalf of all the doctors, nurses, and all the staff and colleagues working at Ujala Cygnus. Thank you very much. Thank you. We go on with Angela Gijaga, CEO of the Financing Alliance for Health in Kenya. The Financing Alliance for Health mobilizes financial resources to achieve health for all. We are closing the $4.4 billion annual funding gap for community health services as we increase health access for more than 50% of the Africa population. Why do we do this? Because people matter, and they're everyday heroes like Yuri Dice who go door to door delivering services and averting death. How do we do this? By building bridges. No, I'm not an engineer, and these are not infrastructural bridges. These are political, financial, and partnership bridges. We are bringing communities to the table with governments on the health policy process. We are bringing together communities, private sector, public sector, philanthropy to design financing instruments that work for the continent. We are building intersectoral bridges between climate and health and finance and so many more as we actually advocate for proximal local leadership within the context. 
I stand here representing a team, an amazing team and a collective that to date has served 22 governments across the continent, mobilized more than $200 million on domestic budgets, co-designed $100 million catalytic funding instruments, and also created economic opportunities for more than 100,000 community health workers across the continent. But we are just getting started. We are looking forward to mobilizing $2 billion, creating 200,000 jobs, and reaching 100 million people across Africa. Will you join us? Triumph, trials have been our resilience, and we're looking forward to this journey together. On behalf of the many that I represent as I stand here, the governments, the community health workers, and the communities, I am grateful and indebted. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please welcome now for the Life Bank Group, Temi Giwa Tobusun. Thank you. Um, eight years ago, when we started Life Bank, uh, we knew that lack of access to the most critical supplies cost many people their lives. We knew that the people that are most affected are women children and the most vulnerable members of our community. We knew, those of us who started Life Bank, that we could really try to solve this. Building technology, building, marketplace te building a marketplace technology to ensure that we can predict demand and get the supplies into the hands of the most, to the health workers who serve these patients. In the last eight years, we have served 43 million people, delivered products like blood, medical oxygen, vaccines, PPEs, the works, to thousands of healthcare facilities across 15 communities in three countries in Africa, Nigeria, Kenya, and Ethiopia. On behalf of my colleagues at Life Bank, the riders who work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, delivering these critical supplies into these communities. I accept this award and I thank you for the honor Looking forward, we're not stopping. We're going to continue to grow and scale our innovation to the last mile to different communities and to prove that young people can innovate to solve problems in our communities. Thank you. Let's go on with our next awardee, Ruchika Singhal, president of Medtronics Labs. Good afternoon, everybody. And I do want to really sincerely thank the Schwab Foundation for this recognition <laughs> for one reason. <laughs> Typically, multinational corporations are not associated with social impact. Um, but at Medtronic, our mission has always been to use technology to alleviate pain, restore health, extend life. And we created labs more than 10 years ago to really think about how can we utilize technology to not just invent new therapies, but actually transform health systems. So many of our health systems that exist are 200 years old. They were built for wars. We cannot reach more than half of the world's population. And digital solutions has the power to transform that. And that's what we are doing. Um, we've built an open source system that we call SPICE that is truly reimagining how data-driven insights can transform care at the last mile in, resource, in very low resource settings around the world, not just in developing countries, but even in places in the US. Uh, we can't do this alone. We're working very closely with a lot of our private sector partners, public sector partners, policymakers, and we need all of us to come together to truly solve the healthcare delivery problem that exists around the world. Uh, to date, we've reached about one and a half million people and are moving the needle on outcomes and really working together. My request for everybody is let's hold hands so we can go further together. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, unfortunately, our next RD is not able to be here with us today, but we still would like to give you an idea about the great initiatives he's driving forward successfully within Essilor Luxotica. It's Sogati Banerjee, and uh, I would like to give a little bit of insight in his work. One in three people in the world suffer from poor vision, 
and that's at least 2.5 billion people. And the majority of them reside in base of pyramid regions. So Essilor Luxottica has an ambition, the ambition to eliminate uncorrected poor vision within one generation. Sogata Banerjee, he's the head of sustainable programming for the company, he drives, he really drives this ambition. Sogata kick-started the company's efforts by pioneering the iMitra program, and I like this word because iMitra means the friend of the eye, back in 2013, which trains young people to become primary vision care micro-entrepreneurs in rural India. From 2013, Essilor Luxottica has created close to 30,000 sustainable access points offering access to vision care for people all around the world. Now, he's not here, unfortunately. He's not here with us, but I'm sure our applause will find the way to Sogata. So let's hear this for him. <laughs> We go on with a new category. We heard already of the power of technology, if it's accessible. So leveraging the transformative power of technology is our next sector. And please welcome here, Gerald Abila. He's the founder and CEO of Barefoot Law. Please. When I heard, when I heard Pascal saying, unfortunately, I thought I was, the function was coming to a close before I got a chance to speak. <laughs> But yeah, I'm Gerald Abila, I'm a lawyer and still a human being. My work revolves around, uh, around bridging the gap between people and the justice system using technology and innovation. And it's for that reason that I started Barefoot Law 10 years ago. What Barefoot Law does is we make the law readily available to underserved communities across Africa through leveraging various platforms and various technologies from mobile phones to the internet. We've been able to serve people like Rose, who through our intervention was able to prevent herself and her family from being evicted from land, and 987,000 other people over the decade in which we've operated. I believe making the law readily available leads to peaceful and prosperous societies, because if people have the law, then they can use it to prevent and resolve the problems that we have, and that will eventually lead to better livelihoods not only across our continent, but across the world. I would like to speak from my heart, because at moments like this I get emotional. I know you told us not to thank, but I would like to thank the Schwab Foundation <laughs> and the World Economic Forum, because this means a lot, not only to me, but to the Barefoot Law team who I know are watching right now. I want to thank my family who stood by me through this decade. I would like to thank the people that we serve, I would like to thank everyone else. But of course, most importantly, I would like to thank the giants upon whose shoulders we've stood. Echo and Green, uh, Cheryl is here, Draper Richards Kaplan Foundation, uh, the King Bodwa Foundation, and so many more who I can't name today. Remember, the ultimate law is humanity, and I ask you to join me to make this available across Africa and across the world. I thank you. Now, from Frontier Markets, please welcome the founder, Acheta Shah. Hi, everyone. I created Frontier Markets to unlock the potential of women and rural markets. 800 million people in rural India today are not accessing products and services that help them improve their quality of life. We solve this by investing in women, technology, and being the bridge to deliver products and services to rural entrepreneurs and communities. Frontier Markets has created 20,000 digital women entrepreneurs that we call Settle Jeevan Sahilis, who have been leveraging our technology to help companies design and deliver solutions to the last mile. One million families have accessed high-impact quality services at their doorstep. Sahelis are trusted influencers, voicing the needs of the rural communities, but also wealth creators, earning over $30 million of income to reinvest into their rural families. But it's not just about impact. It's also smart business. Women have been the central points of designing solutions for the next markets to come to rural India in e-commerce, in financial services, in healthcare, and agriculture. 
We launched an initiative last year called She Leads Bharat, the goal to invest in 1 million women to impact 100 million lives by 2030 in partnership with government, social businesses, and of course, community. I again also want to thank the Shroud Foundation because we always will, uh, but also Frontier Markets as a team and our partners, uh, MasterCard, Echo and Green, the entire community of Catalyst, like are all here, so thank you so much. But also most importantly, our Sahelis, because they are the champions of change. She leads Bharat, and if they do, then innovation happens, markets come in, and most importantly, change is real. Thank you. Thank you very much. We now focus on the potential of young people. And we start with our RD, Rudaina Abdo, founder of Taki. I started Taki nine years ago in response to the Syrian refugee crisis and the impact it had on the lost education of children. Being the daughter of Palestinian refugees myself, the injustices of war run deep for me. Digital literacy today is a, is a human right as much as education is, where two thirds of the world's children don't have internet access at home. Veki brings education and digital literacy to refugee and vulnerable communities in the Middle East. And we do this through partnerships. Businesses donate their used laptops to us, and education technology companies give us the right to use their content. We take this content and uh, load it on our laptops and deliver through our platform and deliver an offline learning solution to refugee communities that have limited or no internet access. But we don't stop there. We've developed teacher training resources to help teachers learn and apply digital skills. And we've co-developed a social emotional learning program to help young children deal with heavy emotions, which couldn't be needed more than today. We're in 135 schools, reaching over 30,000 children, and want to reach thousands more throughout the Middle East and beyond, including trying to see how to reach the children of Gaza. Our work wouldn't be possible without our partners and the amazing Veki team, and I invite you to join us to give children their future back. Thank you. Thank you. Our next RD is Jennifer Blatt. She's the president of Strive Together. Economic mobility in the United States has been declining since the 1940s. More often than not, where you live or the color of your skin determines your destiny. At Strive Together, we're working to change this. We're a national movement working to ensure that every child has what they need to thrive. We do our work in place and through partnerships. We support 70 cross-sector place-based partnerships in communities across the U.S., reaching more than 14 million young people. In these places, cross-sector partners organize around a shared vision for improving outcomes from birth through college and a career. And they're in getting incredible results. Our partnerships, of our, our network of partnerships, 83% of those partnerships are seeing two or more outcomes improve and racial and socioeconomic disparity gaps close. And now we're embarking on an ambitious new goal. We are working to put an additional 4 million young people on a path to economic mobility by the year 2030. We'll achieve this goal by building on and expanding our national network of communities that we support, by training people at all levels in a community to use data to drive decision making, by changing policy at the local, state, and federal level so that we can in redirect billions of public dollars to what works for kids, and by building the demand and awareness for what we call a new civic infrastructure where systems are organized around young people. Thank you for this recognition. I accept it on behalf of our network of 70 communities that we support and all of the children and families and residents and community members and partners working in those network members. They are making a change so that every child has every opportunity from cradle to career.
And now from the Foundation Mi Sangre, we welcome Catalina Koch Dugue. I grew up in a country where violence and social fractures are an integral part of our reality. Colombia has 9.6 million victims of violence, of which 36% are young. Across Latin America, millions of young people are living in exclusion and face constant risk. Despite their immense potential to contribute to a culture of peace, their voices have been historically excluded. At Fundación Mi Sangre, we're unleashing young people's potential to contribute to a more peaceful and inclusive society. Through our transformative leadership journeys and the incubation of change initiatives, we have impacted 2 million people, mobilized 7 million more towards youth causes, and influenced key decision makers to put them at the center of their agenda. Kelly, one of our young participants who was once a member of an armed gang, created an art school to protect girls from the risks of the street as a result of our programs. Jelitza, a young participant from one of, from a, one of the poorest towns in Colombia, was recently elected as a mayor. <laughs> Stories like this remind us to see young people not only as victims or perpetrators. They are part of the solution, and it is up to us as a society to provide them with transformative learning experiences and opportunities for them to thrive and become active agents of change. Thank you. Gracias, equipo. <laughs> Our next awardee is Mohamed Amin Sariat. He's the president of Tibu Africa. Hi, everyone. Thanks to the Schwab Foundation for recognizing our work in Africa. I am a former international basketball player, and I'm running Tibu Africa organization with 230 colleagues and talents in 40 cities in Morocco and five countries in Africa. Every day, we deliver and we design social, innovative, and sustainable solutions focused on education, employability, and social entrepreneurship for 250,000 youth and women in Africa. You know, I started this work 10, 11 years ago when I stopped my basketball career. In Morocco, there is more than 7,789 primary public schools with 4 million kids. 6, 12, they didn't have access to sports. I started and discovered basketball when I was 13. Imagine if we give access to sports for these kids. I'm very proud to announce that we launched an initiative, national initiative called Life Champions. It will give the opportunity for 4 million kids to be active in the game, to develop their skills, and to be better in school. It will create jobs for youth and women. For me, it's a give back. Sports, it's not only a sector, it's everything. Thank you. How can we strengthen institution? institutions by great initiatives within the institutions. And the first award goes to Chantaline Carpentier from the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. Good afternoon. I'm an entrepreneur within the United Nations with a mission to shift our economies to serve us and our planet. While studying economics, I always wondered why we were never taught about social and solidarity economy so prominent in Quebec. It's, it's an economy that involves people pooling their resources to improve their, their activities and reinvest their revenues into their communities. Fast forward, as the green economy grow, is growing and gaining momentum following the financial crisis and the adoption of the SDGs, I had a haha moment. We need a new economic model for sustainable development that jointly advance social and environmental issues. So I, lev I, I leveraged the UN network of economists to start 
producing policy briefs on the economies, the economic model that prioritize people, such as the social solidarity economy, the care economy, the creative, the frugal in innovation economies, as well as those that advance they prioritize the planet, such as the blue, the green, and the circular economy. I then also volunteer to represent UNCTAD in the UN Interagency Task Force on Social and Solidarity Economy. As, as the social and solidarity economy gained momentum in 2022, I eagerly accepted to chair the UN Interagency Task Force on Social and Solidarity Economy, work with the government of Spain, Senegal, Chile, and rally 42 government to adopt a resolution within the UN General Assembly where our leaders commit to put in place enabling policies. They ask the financial sector to, make, to create tailor-made financial sources and the UN to step up our work to support social and solidarity economy. Please join me in the task force in galvanizing this UN resolution so that we can shift this economy to people and planet-centered, as well as provide support to my co-awardees today and the more than one billion members of cooperatives, of mutuals, of self-help group, and the social entrepreneurs that actually are solving the SDG challenges across the globe for us. Thank you. From Mexico's National Institute for Social Economy, Juan Manuel Martinez Louvier. We should have more, but we must to be better. Uh, hi, I am Juan Martinez Louvier from the National Institute of Social Economy from the government of Mexico. Degradation of the environment, poverty, and violence. I think they are variables that show us that humanity has lost balance. That question, that very question, lead my professional and, prof and personal life and derives into one question, how to find, how to perform a much better economic system. I witness the power of e social economy, how it empowers indiv individuals to work with their communities to thrive into better economic relationships. Now, from the government of Mexico, we're trying to enhance these possibilities in three different strategies. We need to change our mindsets, our culture about how and, and when uh, this economy can be. We need to enhance the financial sector of the social economy and, of course, to mobilize many normatives to have a much better legal work for the social economy. I am very uh, pleased to receive this award of course because of myself, but also because with this award, the Schwab Foundation and the Global Economic Forum sends a message that we need, as a world, we need a much better social economy, we need a much better system to include everyone in every country, in every region. Thank you very much. Now from Indonesia's Ministry of National Development Planning, please welcome with us Vivi Yulasvati. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Vivi Yulaswati, working for the government of Indonesia. Indonesia has 17,000 islands, having the biggest, the fourth biggest populations and the second largest biodiversity. Indonesia facing enormous challenges in the climate change, as well as ensuring its development sustainable and inclusive. SDGs provide us with the framework how to work together, as well as balancing the implementations of the 5P, people, planet, prosperity, partnership, and peace. We maintain or mainstreaming the targets and indicators into the national development planning as well as the local level. We integrate the stakeholders' activities into the actions plan. We develop around 40 uh, SDGs uh, centers in the local universities and also innovate the financing instruments like the SDGs bond to enable everybody, every stakeholders to work together. This show, this picture shows how to localizing SDGs among stakeholders. Putting the 
put, uh, putting the uh, ethnology uh, like the uh, like the paralysis as well as the uh, involvement of the local uh, youth, we actually could transform it from the uh, post tailing areas into the um, mangrove uh, mangrove uh, park. So uh, this also shows that the trust can be built through the open, fair, and honest process. Really appreciate for the SWAP Foundation to bring me here and look forward for further collaborations for better future and the planet. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vivi. You mentioned the five Ps and we pick out two of them now for the next category, people and planet first. And for this award, the next award, we will welcome two of these on stage. It's Domingo and Atossa. Domingo Piaz is president of Amazon Sacred Headwaters and Atossa Soltani, director of global strategy. Please welcome them on stage. <laughs> Para los indígenas, la Amazonía es un ser vivo. Tiene el mismo derecho que nosotros. Alianza Cuencas Sagradas representa a 30 pueblos indígenas de Perú-Ecuador. Nuestro compromiso es conservar, tener selva intacta, los 35 millones de hectáreas. También paso a la colega. Winyahe in Achua means greetings. The Amazon is a living entity. For us indigenous peoples, it's like any other person who has rights to live and exist. I represent an alliance of 30 indigenous nations in Ecuador and Peru. We have committed to permanently protect 35 million hectares of our ancestral lands for the benefit of humanity. And now I'll pass it to, to me, Atosa. The Amazon is called the lungs of the earth. Indigenous peoples call the Amazon the heart of the planet in the way it regulates rainfall and stabilizes our climate. Scientists warn that we must protect at least 80% of the Amazon to avoid the tipping point of no return, which would be disastrous for our planet and cause a massive dieback. There's hope. As Domingo mentioned, there is indigenous nations have committed to permanently protect their headwaters. Over the last six years, the indigenous peoples have come together to create a bioregional plan for the, how, we were going to, how we were going to protect this uh, vital organ of the biosphere. We have programs, have started programs to implement the bioregional plan based on indigenous cosmology of that the forest is alive and sacred. Programs on forest monitoring, strengthening indigenous governance of the 24 member organizations of our alliance, food systems, restoration, reforestation. We're working on uh, land rights battles to guarantee legal legalization of 9 million hectares of indigenous territories. We're working on a reforestation program that could be scaled to reforest 8 million hectares. We're also doing advocacy campaigns to halt 80% of the forest, which is being uh, destroyed, uh, threatened with mining and oil, and calling for a moratorium on new drilling and conditioned debt relief for countries who are drilling just to pay the debt. We invite you to join us. This is a historic and unprecedented at scale conservation led by indigenous peoples. We hope you can join us. And I'll pass it back on to Domingo to close. Mi llamado a vosotros, al mundo entero quienes me escuchan, tenemos esperanza. La única esperanza es una alianza, indígenas no indígenas. Hombres, mujeres, jóvenes, sabios, tenemos que construir nuevo barco. Y trabajemos con nuestro mente y corazón. Y todo trabajo con amor, tendremos éxito todos. Maquete. Indigenous peoples are working together 
and calling for an alliance with non-Indigenous from all sectors, women, men, youth, women, and all in business. We all have to work together and chart a new path forward in a new boat for humanity. And we do this through love, through connection of our hearts and our minds. And we have hope. It is possible to achieve it. Makete. Achwar, thank you. Now, last but not least, from Shenzhen Power Solutions, please welcome the founder, Licia. It has been a very busy last 15 years for me because I raised four children, two girls, one boy, and one baby company, Power Solution. <laughs> You may not know, until today, there are still 800, more than 800 million people stay in the darkness without any electricity supply. And their living conditions are really challenging. Myself had the same grow up experience. Born in a rural family, stopped my middle school because of poverty. I kept myself study for high education while building a business. So I really understand how important of the affordability is. So I ran a lot of field study by myself to innovate the solutions. For this solar lamp, I called it Candles Killer. Total Energy named it Pocky Sunshine. It has only nine parts, and four months kerosene cost can afford it last for five years. This is a small innovation, but a big contribution. The last 15 years, we have been helped more than 60 million people in the darkness access of energy by solar and reduced more than 8 million tons of carbon emissions. Being in this journey is not easy for 15 years. I really appreciate a lot of guidance, help, and support from numerous people. First of all is my team, and the Africa local partners, international organizations, mentors, and big corporate CSR ESG program partners, especially today's recognition and award by SWA Foundation. So with our further help, with our further efforts, we can reduce the cost of energy for the people with lesser means. We can transform the darkness that envelops the poor community into a beacon of hope and progress. We will continuously to innovate, to light up their, their nights, and also empower them all for a better future. At last, I sincerely invite all of you to join us in this mission. At the last, I again want to thank the SWA Foundation because you never know how important it is for a social enterprise to bring us in this stage to be recognized and seen by the world. This is really encouraging. Thank you. Thank you very much, Licia, and thanks to all of you, dear awardees. Gerald was saying he's getting emotional. I'm getting emotional too. <laughs> I'm really touched by your work. And uh, on behalf of the Schwab Foundation, I would really like to thank you for your, for your engagement. And uh, you really deserve these awards. Now, your great work for me personally stands for hope, perspective, for change, for impact, and for action. Now, being at the World Economic Forum, I want to say from the bottom of my heart that dialogue is really important, but what makes the difference in the end is action. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great World Economic Forum. Thank you.